Can Linux Replace Windows 7? Today, you and I are going to explore whether or not Linux can replace Windows 7. Windows 7 reached its end of life in January 2020. This means that Microsoft will no longer be providing security updates or support for the operating system. So if you're still using Windows 7, you may need to make a decision about what to do next. One option is to upgrade to Windows 10. However, Windows 10 has been met with mixed reviews, and some people find it a major departure from Windows 7. Another option is to switch to Linux. <laughs> Linux is a free and open source operating system that is known for its stability, security, and customization. So can Linux replace Windows 7? Let's find out. Here we have a test system with Linux Mint 20 installed. As we are talking about switching from Windows 7, we can view this from the perspective of a lifetime Windows user. To start, let's discuss the look and feel. The interface has some similar elements to Windows. Currently, we are looking at the desktop. This is the default wallpaper that comes with Linux Mint. There is an icon in the upper left that is basically my computer. Let's give that a double click. It opens the Linux equivalent of File Explorer. All the familiar elements are there. File, Edit, View, and Help menus at the top, followed by the Navigation Bar. Navigation Pane on the left, complete with Documents, Music, Pictures, Videos, and Downloads folder. The pane on the right shows the files in the currently selected folder. And the bar at the bottom shows details about the file or folder selected. Back to the desktop, at the lower left, we have the Linux equivalent of the start menu. The presentation is a little different. On the left, all programs is towards the top, followed by program groups. On the right is the apps organized into those groups. And at the bottom is the handy dandy search. Moving to the right, there are some pinned programs on the taskbar. And off to the lower right is the system tray, complete with the pending updates notification. That makes me feel right at home. This is the point where things start to get very different from Windows. The right-click context menu on the desktop has a properties option, but it doesn't take you to display properties or system properties. It's a file properties dialog box that appears. So how do we get to the display settings? That is available in the Start menu. Say I want to change the screen resolution. Some options are missing, like 1280 by 720. Do I need a driver? Speaking of drivers, is there a device manager equivalent? There is a driver manager app, but for me, it's blank. Maybe there's another app that will work? How do we get new apps? There is an app for that the software manager. I am aware of an app called Hard Info, so we can search for that. And there it is. What about the terminal thing in Linux? We can install apps from the terminal. Uh, let's open the terminal, of course. Then we can type sudo apt install and the name of the app which in this case is hard info. First, the app needs to be found in the repository. When it is, we can press the Y key to continue. I do like the scrolling text in Terminal. It's way more interesting than a progress bar. Once the app finishes installing, we can type the name at the prompt. And there we go. This is hard info. It's something like Device Manager in Windows. On to the testing. The first test is usability. We want a functional browser. Firefox does come pre-installed, which is functional. You can effectively browse the web with it. But maybe we want to use Edge. Let's try to install it. The download button doesn't seem to do anything. 
maybe Google Chrome will work. There is a Linux version of Chrome available. Let's install it. All right, there we have it. Google Chrome version 114. Next, we want some kind of Office suite. Let's try to install Office 2016. Okay, uh, Linux doesn't know what to do with the installer package. It just opens it like a compressed file. While that is interesting, it's not useful. Mint does come with LibreOffice installed, and it's a little different than Microsoft Office. There's a bit of a learning curve, sure. An alternative would be to use Google Docs. Third, we want to play games. I really like Diablo 2. Let's see what happens if we insert the install disk. We get the same result as Microsoft Office. Linux doesn't know what to do with the installer and just opens it like a compressed file. There is an app called Wine. It lets you run some Windows apps and games on Linux with varying results. There are compatibility lists available that shows what works and to what degree. There are a number of reasons why Linux could be a good replacement for Windows 7. There's stability. Linux is known for its stability. This is because it's a Unix-based operating system which has been around for decades and is used by millions of people around the world. And there's security. Linux is also known for its security. This is because it's an open source operating system, which means that its code is freely available for anyone to review. This makes it very difficult for hackers to find and exploit security vulnerabilities in Linux. And we have customization. Linux is very customizable. This means you can change the look and feel of the operating system to suit your own preferences. You can also install different software packages to add new features and functionality. There are some cons of Linux. Of course, there are some potential downsides. Software compatibility. Not all software is compatible with Linux. This is because most software is developed for Windows or Mac. However, there are a number of ways to run Windows software on Linux, such as through Wine or a virtual machine. There is a learning curve. Linux can have a bit of a learning curve this is because it's a different operating system than Windows or Mac OS. However, there are a number of resources available to help you learn how to use Linux. The viability of switching from Windows 7 to Linux comes down to the programs you use. You're not just switching from Windows, you're also switching from Microsoft Office and all of the other programs not compatible with Linux. The problem is twofold. First, you need to find an alternative program. Then you need to learn how to use the new program. Now let's go update Linux and watch some beautiful scrolling text for a while. 